Greetings, good morning. Welcome to the worship life of South Frankfurt Presbyterian Church. My name is Marian Taylor, the pastor. The pianist you heard playing so superbly just now is my husband, Stephen Taylor, and we are live streaming from our living room. So welcome. Our Facebook site keeps these worship experiences available as video resources, along with many other posts that I think you'll find edifying. So please spend some time browsing there and forwarding things to people as you uh, feel inspired to do. Um, we also have a YouTube channel and we'd love for you to subscribe to that and of course a website. Now, would you please join me in our responsive call to worship? We give thanks to you, O Lord, for all your goodness. Your steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those redeemed from trouble, gathered in from near and far, praising you in a thousand tongues and arts, inspired by your unfathomable love a loving truth found in every land and culture. Let, Let us worship, worship God. God. Our children's message this morning is brought to us by Ms. Christy Brock. Good morning. I'm Ms. Christy. And this morning, I have a bag of candy with me. It's a little early for candy, you think? You're probably right. But in this bag of candy, there are lots of different flavors. There's peppermint, spearmint, butterscotch, orange, lemon, lime, all different kinds of flavors. It's interesting that I've noticed that when I share my candy with children, most often the butterscotch is the last piece chosen. Why don't children like butterscotch? I don't know. Is it because they don't like the flavor? Is it because they don't like the color? Is it because they don't like the wrapping that it's in? Don't know. Maybe you have your own ideas about that. But sometimes we treat people the same way that children treat candy. When children play games, some children are the last to be chosen. And maybe it's because they're a little different. Maybe they have a physical handicap. Or maybe their skin is a different color. Whatever the reason might be, the other children just don't want to choose them. Have you ever been the one who wasn't chosen? It isn't a very good feeling, is it? We all need to remember that Jesus loves all the children. And he said, love each other as I have loved you. If you are ever the one that is left out, don't worry. Jesus loves you just as much as he loves the other children. He loves us all. Let's pray. Dear Father, help us to remember that Jesus taught us to love one another just as you loved him and as he loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That was a wonderful message. Thank you, Christy. And um, I will be returning to some of those themes in the sermon. But first, let's listen as Stephen play, uh, reads uh, our scripture reading for today. Let's attend to that reading. Our reading today comes from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Aragopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands 
as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and allotted the time of their existence in the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, through indeed, through, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of you own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Harold Kurtz was one of the giants of Presbyterian mission history. And I knew him and loved him as an adoptive uncle. He wrote an essay called God's Touchstones of Truth in Every Culture. He said that early in his 22 years of service in Ethiopia, he was invited to visit a remote village to tell them what he believed about God. <clears throat> he wrote, I did the best I could to tell them about God as that revelation had come to us through the biblical record. <clears throat> We're all created by God. We're all one people. We have sinned. God has been seeking us over the generations. Finally, God came to us in Jesus, his word made flesh. I'm sure you can imagine, he said, the struggle I faced to condense the good news. An elder at that gathering then summarized what he had heard Harold say. Then the elder paused, Harold writes, standing before me, looking me straight in the eye. He was stooped and wrinkled, leaning on a stick. As I looked into his eyes, I had the sensation that I was looking into the eyes of all of Africa with its sorrows and joys, its pain and laughter, its despair and hope. After that pause, he said something which shook me, Harold wrote, to the depth of my spiritual and theological and missiological roots. He said simply, that is what we have always hoped God was like. That experience taught Harold what all the best missionaries figure out. God has always been at work responding to the longings of people in every place, with the result that in every culture, God has helped to create touchstones of truth. A touchstone is a kind of rock you can test gold on to see the quality of the gold. So a test of value and authenticity. In education, a touchstone is the basis for further learning. God's relationship with the chosen people, the Hebrews, was a special covenant, and the Bible can't be understood apart from that. But God has been responding to longings everywhere and has helped people in every place to bring forth touchstones of truth. Certainly, there's no culture that has a lock on God's voice. As Christie said in children's time, God loves all people. So this means that God has prepared a way to hear the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere. This should give us respect and curiosity. What has God taught to others that could give us fresh insights? What could we learn that might even challenge our own culture in good ways? Paul was one of those great missionaries. 
When he spoke to an audience in Athens, he showed them the respect of having read their poets and their philosophers. He showed them the respect of observing their statues and other cultural artifacts with an eye to finding their touchstones of God's truth. He showed them the respect of saying that they already knew something about what he would tell them. Some people have to come to that respect for what God can do in others by the hard way. <clears throat> Paul was such a good missionary in part because he had had the experience of discovering that he was wrong. At first, he persecuted Christians. He then had some shattering experiences that led him to believe that the very people he persecuted knew God's truth better than he did. From then on, he entered into other people's worlds with greater humility. He looked at Athenian art for clues. Smart. Artists are sensitive and profoundly convey or critique a society's viewpoints. That is one reason that Christian artists in every land and culture often do the work of connecting their local cultural thinking with the truth that they find in Christian faith. The Japanese block print artist Sadao Watanabe did this wonderfully. In his works depicting biblical stories, if there was a table, it always had bowls of rice on it. There's just no way to overstate the cultural importance of the way life has revolved around rice in Japan. Not bread. Watanabe also depicted Jesus and his followers with flat noses, within Asian cultures sometimes a way of pointing to a humble station in life, and therefore to God's solidarity with poor and outcast peoples. I will show you a Watanabe reproduction during the postlude. It is his interpretation of the dinner in the Road to Emmaus story. Look for the rice and look for the noses. He is conveying the gospel through touchstones of God's truth in Japanese culture. Just as God has helped every culture have touchstones of truth, our sinfulness means that every culture has to be confronted with the ways that it's distant from the truth of God's love in Christ. Paul, standing in Athens that day, confronted the audience with their making a concrete representation of everything, thus missing the most important presence in the universe, the invisible God and creator of all things, whose majesty is hinted at by all of nature. To present such critiques in love and humility is not easy. Christian missionaries to the United States have dared to tell us what we're missing, too. A Christian missionary from India to the United States, Thomas John, published a book in 1995. After making some compassionate and positive statements about the United States, Thomas John critiqued what he called our empty autonomy. He went on to say, empty autonomy is an understanding of individual freedom that has no reference to the larger whole. He said our passion for freedom began as an escape from institutions and traditions that had imposed their will on people. But by overreacting to that, we have left a spiritual void that ironically gives authoritarianism a fresh chance to impose on us. To learn and share God's truth across cultures does not require travel, but it does require persistence and sensitivity. When we look at the subcultures all around us at work and in the community, what can we learn from those artistic expressions, those cries and longings that we see there? How can we know a, something new about Jesus. How can Jesus be a bridge for us to those subcultures? How can we learn something new about God's love? 
I know absolutely nothing about hip hop, but our church is connected to it, lifting it up through the program called Heartbeats, based at the King Center. Grounded in an understanding of trauma, this program supports young people who want the tools to express their emotions and experiences through music that matters to them. A missionary to the people of hip hop has to be immersed in the context and the meaning and listen for those touchstones of truth that God may be eliciting there. I hope some of those involved will bring us word of those touchstones and enrich our lives of faith. The insight from our scripture today is that God is at work wherever people truly seek God. The story of Paul in Athens is not the only scriptural warrant for this by a long shot. It's important for us to have a culture, but not to be trapped by it. It's good to hear what God wants us to learn from others. Let's pray. Make us good missionaries, O oh God. Confident that we will find you everywhere we go and ready to learn from you through other peoples. Amen. For our hymn, I chose over oh, a thousand tongues to sing. Tongues can mean languages. To be a missionary like Paul or like Harold Kurtz calls us to a considerable investment in learning starting with often with the vocabulary that each distinctive group uses. So I've included the Spanish version of the first verse. Let me read that verse to you for pronunciation. Mil voces para celebrar a mi libertador. Las glorias de su majestad, los triunfos de su amor. Let's sing. Let's have a time now for our prayers of intercession. For repair and redemption, we give thanks, O oh God. And as we pray for ourselves, we pray for all people to know your love. I invite all to post prayers of intercession now in the comments, lifting up situations as the Spirit leads you. O oh God, as you stir us to remember all in need, we respond with the words, Merciful God, your grace is already there. We pray for ourselves and our loved ones that we might have faith in you and in your providence. Merciful God, your grace is already there. We pray for all whose economic situation is fragile or even broken now, that help received will be sufficient for the needs. Merciful God, your, your grace, grace is, is already there. there. We pray for all whose physical condition makes for vulnerability in these days or may even be in the hospital under care. Merciful God, your, your grace, grace is, is already there. there. We pray for health workers and all others who are having to take extra risks for the good of all. Merciful God, your, Your grace, grace is, is already, already there. there. 
We pray for all public officials that your guidance and inspiration will help them prove worthy of the trust that we place in them. Merciful God, your, your grace, grace is already there. there. Lift up all the comments that are being made now as people are offering situations. Merciful God, your, your grace, grace is, is already there. there. And now let's pray together the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. After the charge and benediction, we'll hear a postlude, and I will direct the camera toward a reproduction of the Emmaus Dinner block print by Sadao Watanabe. In keeping with this same emphasis on the variety of cultural expressions, all inspired by one God, we will hear a collaboration of organist Roland Herzl and saxophonist John Avent playing an arrangement of Holy, Holy, Holy. The cultural wor worlds of the traditional church organ sound and the jazzy saxophone come together to inspire in a new way. So now go out in the world in peace, have courage, hold on to all that is good. Help in God's work of repair and redemption and missionary work by strengthening the faint-hearted, helping the suffering, and honoring all people. Love and serve God and all God's children rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you and look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>